welcome back to another Blender tutorial. Today I'm going to be teaching you guys how to sculpt a rock and then if you are interested I will be showing you how you can create a material for this rock within Substance Painter. If you do not have Substance Painter I have made a video where you can get it absolutely free and um, yeah you can get it absolutely free so go ahead and click on that video grab Substance Painter if you are interested it works totally okay as you will see in the next video but let's jump straight into it. I have loaded up a almost default scene. I have customized my my uh, startup screen so it doesn't have that pesky default cube. But um, yeah, so we're going to jump right in here first. You're going to want to hit Shift A and create a UV sphere. Unfortunately, I don't have the keystrokes up, but um, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know how important that is. I'll be telling you guys how to do everything. Uh, reminder, this isn't a beginner tutorial. You will need to know how to move around in Blender. I'm not going to be explaining everything to you. You're just going to have to follow along and try to figure it out yourself. I don't know. Um, so next, we're going to add a subdivision surface modifier. You can either add it through here, or you can hit Control-3 or Control-2. I like using Control-3 because it gives you more um, to work with. We're going to smooth that out with smooth shading and apply that and boom, you got a perfectly smooth sphere. So after we've done that, we're going to jump into Substance Painter, so, yes, yeah, Substance Painter, no, Sculpt Mode and grab yourself the Flatten Brush, I believe, if I am not mistaken, actually I believe it might be Scrape and Peel. Yeah, I think it's this one. Load up this one, lock area plane and set the strength all the way up. So you want to click this little button here and set this all the way up. And now, if you can see, I'll just turn this up. When you uh, use the brush, it will um, actually lock onto that. And also, because rocks are not symmetrical, go ahead and uh, that's wrong one. disable symmetry lock. And now you can see that this locks on directly and we can sculpt multiple flat faces. Now, you can uh, do this just, you know, you can do it like this or you can use another method and uh, this is just how I like to start. You can, you can play around with some other things, but I just like jumping right into it. Just sculpt a random shape, it doesn't have to be uh, well thought out because of course you are making a rock and uh, I, don't, I don't know how, how how precise rocks are really. Of course, I suppose you could like look at a reference photo and sculpt a rock from that, but we're just creating a very basic basic shape here. Actually, I like it like that. Let's do this, and that looks good. So, now what we're gonna do is I actually want my rock, actually, you know, I like it like this. So if you do feel like you want to bend some things and shape the rock a little more, you can use the pinch grab tool and you can actually just drag it like so you can scale up the brush. Just drag the rock out like this. We'll maybe bring it up here, bring it over there. Okay, now we have a very basic rock shape here. Uh, what I want to do next is I want to grab the um, clay strips here because we want a nice uh, inner rocky look because clay strips can create a very nice effect when you just spam it completely and just strokes like this. So you can see we can create the effect there. But if you look at a photo of real rocks, rocks aren't, you know, completely random. They do have some geometry and I don't know what's with this. I'm gonna see if I can smooth that away. Yes, I can um, So if you do have any of those bugs, you can just smooth them away apparently and um, Yeah, so once you've done that grab the clay strips and Rocks if you look at it in the real life, they do follow a pattern now not necessarily a pattern That's actually poor wording, but they follow a direction like real rocks they're not just like, you know, this side is all random. This side is completely random. This side is completely random. You can do that I mean, it certainly works, but if you want to create, you know, a more pleasant looking rock, in my opinion, then you can just, um, you can stroke in a certain direction, you know, randomize it a bit, but otherwise just completely a, a certain direction. So I'm going to be following this plane and feel free to unsharpen the edges here, like just di dip, <laughs> dip in because in Substance Painter, that's actually going to create a much nicer look once you have this because the way I create the texture. And we'll follow that for the back here. You know, rocks. Just, just do that. It's really not, 
not important what you do there because it, it is the back and it, everything moves in one way so it is it is actually just random there um, I'm gonna just bring that down there I'm gonna smooth that again get rid of these weird effects there grab clay strips again there you go now if you're wondering because I completely forgot to explain this but I am hitting holding down control when I'm doing this if you're not holding down control it's actually gonna build up which it, I mean in some cases you want that like if I want to build up this area here and create more depth here I can do that and then you know just add more complex geometry you you know it, it's good to not be completely down all the time um, but I'm holding control to dip into the rock I say dip in not sure why but to actually like dig in I guess is kind of one of the words you could say um, it goes down really you know it just instead of going up it goes into the rock it's inverted brush strokes essentially so I think I'm, I'm getting pretty happy with this rock shape here I'm gonna just add some randomness back there even even you know let's just let's just merge this area here I like, I like that there we shall move everything over here and there we go now you can make this a game asset you could make this whatever you like um, th there are different ways because of course a game asset you don't want it to be a you don't want it to be too high poly because game assets shouldn't be high poly because you want them to run smoothly um, but I, I'll show you both methods. I'll show you a method on how you can easily make this a game asset. Unfortunately, that method doesn't work in Substance Painter because there's something goes wrong with a certain map. Um, and, if, and if you've tried it before, I'm sure you already know what I'm talking about. Substance Painter isn't too good with pre-prepared normal maps. Um, again, this isn't this isn't a beginner tutorial, so if you have no idea what I'm talking about, uh, then uh, probably not the best tutorial to follow here. And again, if you uh, do have these weird areas where it's kind of crossing into each other and creating that effect, you can just smooth it over to get rid of that. Okay, I'm pretty happy with this shape here. Uh, I think I'm going to actually smooth this area a little more. Not sure why there's a little, uh, there's a crease there for some reason. Don't know why that is. But um, I can actually set this to one maybe. No. Yeah, I don't know why that's there. Well. Sure, there's some way to fix it. Maybe you can find it. I, I'm, 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 I, I don't really have the patience to find that right now, though. Okay, so I'm happy with this rock shape here, and I like this, but I do want to uh, uh, kind of crisp some of the edges out, and you know maybe we'll create that there. So you can use this pinch brush here in the selection, and you can actually bring these areas closer together, like so. And this actually does help in Substance Painter. I'm actually going to smooth you out again. Just going to smooth all these edges here and then pinch them back in when I need to. There we go. Because, you know, obviously nobody likes that, that bug there. Blender does sometimes. So I'm liking this. Looks good here. Let's pinch that area too. Kind of spread this out. And actually, I want to flatten here just gonna scale that up there I'm gonna flatten that there we go pinch some more you know create some you know varying edges here and there I'll grab my clay strips again scale that now if you want it to be more high poly while you're sculpting you can use dynamic topology over here and just set this to 5 I found is a good setting. Um, obviously it doesn't look good right now. But when you uh, sculpt with it, it will adapt to the resolution of your brush. Now the reason it looks so pixelated is because we are using a, a smooth shade, like a smooth shading on the model itself. But dynamic topology removes that effect while you're sculpting it. Uh, not sure why, but it does, so just need to get used to that. And I'm going to lower the strength again. Here we go. So I can uh, sculpt in some more detailed rock patterns here.
Okay, you know what? I'm just gonna leave that rock shape there. Looks like a rock to me. So we will exit sculpt mode and you can see when we smooth that out. It now takes the shape. I'm gonna rotate this by negative 90 just so it faces upwards because I don't know why, but I like my rocks to to be facing upwards instead of downward or whatever. Not be laying sideways, I guess is the word. I don't know why, I just feel it looks nicer. But there we go, so that's how you sculpt a basic rock shape. Actually, you know what, once again, I am not happy. Okay, so that's how you sculpt a basic rock. And to lower the polygon count, so this can be an actual game asset, what you wanna do is go into decimate and set this to 0.1. Now 0.1 means it's gonna be 0.1 out of one. So it's just basically consider it percentage, like this is 10% of what the actual geometry is. So you can see this one has 52,000 vertices, uh, 105,000 faces, and this one has 100, I mean 18,000 faces. So it really does reduce it, but again, this sacrifices a lot of quality, um, and you're not going to get, you know, as high poly of a rock, which is why I like to do the texturing and substance painter, and then if you are going to make this into a game asset, use this rock as your base texturing. You're gonna texture everything using this specific rock. And then you're going to apply the textures from this rock onto this rock with the, you know, much less polygon here. Okay, so seven, 5,000 faces compared to 150,000 faces. So yeah, it's a big difference, just, yeah. So. Anyway, that's how you sculpt the rock in the next uh, video. I'm going to be showing you guys how you can texture this and material this in Substance Painter. Um, again, if you don't have Substance Painter, I will leave a link on screen to go watch that video or in the description. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to leave a like, subscribe so you don't miss the next tutorial, and I will see you in the next video. Thanks. Bye.